So the U.S. then through to the semifinals where they will face England. Julie, let's hear from you first. You witnessed it live. What was the atmosphere like and what did you think of the match? I will tell you, I have never been to a women's match where the atmosphere was thumping as that was. It was mm. insane. The opening minutes of that game and before that, the national anthem of, for, for France, the whole stadium singing, flags waving. And, and that's why that fifth minute goal by Megan Rapino was so huge because it totally sucked the air out of that stadium. And with all the energy they had to start that game, that goal, and you could see it, the way France had set up was so poor. They had no one beyond that wall on the near post. And Megan Rapino hit it perfectly. And it, and it was so critical because it really sucked the air out of, out of it. And in the second half, same thing. They got a little momentum, France did. Megan Rapino answers that bell as you talked about in the open uh, and again just killed that momentum and the energy in the stadium and it was huge for them I think especially that fifth minute goal. Well I love the confidence of a Megan Rapino who honestly hasn't played that well mm. I mean though she got the two PKs against Spain and converted with to get the U.S. into this knockout round in the into the quarterfinals but you didn't see that from France, did you, Jules? You didn't see that player that was perhaps struggling in the moment come and step out like we expected like yeah. a Majri or an Henri. Yeah. I, can I just talk about Rapino too? I think you hit on it, Kate. But, I mean, think about the week she's had as well, right? And to your point, she had, a, to her, by her own acknowledgement, a, a bad game against Spain. So to bounce back like she did in those critical moments was huge. And then I think for, for France's part, you know, they, they couldn't get a hold of the game as well. And I give a lot of credit to that back line. We've, we've you know, and I think Lissonaire had two huge saves in the second half to keep a minute. We've been very critical defensively and picking holes on where they need to get better and Crystal done on that left side. She gets out of position a little bit in that first half. But, boy, that matchup beyond, with Diani and Crystal Dunn in the first half it was something because Dunn would recover every time she got beat. She would recover. Same thing on the other side with Kelly O'Hara. And I thought that back, back line was tremendous for the United States tonight. Hey, one player that wasn't in the starting 11 is Lindsay Horan. This is a player everybody mm -hmm. thought would be in the starting lineup. Julie, I wonder what your reaction was when you didn't see her in a team sheet. Yeah, I was surprised as well. I mean, because she's the one who Lindsay Horan with Rose Lavelle, they brought in to settle the team in the midfield to get a hold of the ball, to control it. And I think that was the one area really neither team did well at this game is getting any consistent rhythm in this game. And the United States, for as good as they were in finding those channels and getting Alex into that, she played more of a provider role tonight. Um, and finding even done on that overlap with the goal, the goal that was called back. They never felt like they got into that rhythm, and I think Haran helps in that regard. So I think you're going to continue <laughs> to have this debate against a very good England team going into the semifinals, and that's to take nothing away from Sam Mewis because I thought she was excellent tonight. We got a debate brewing on our hands, Again, Kate. again, this debate will never die that we have. I think Rose Lavelle was a young player, and you saw it today. You saw her struggle in those big mm -hmm. moments. But I don't think you take her out now. She's the most creative player the United States has had in a jersey since I can remember. And if you take her out now, you're going to crush her confidence. Mm. And I think you bring her on. The question is, you know, for me, it was all about Haran not starting because she gives up so many fouls. In the NWSL, she also is the most fouled, but she concedes the most as well. And with the danger that we saw today, Wendy Renard on set pieces, I think that was a difference. Yeah. Julie, i got to ask you about Alyssa Nair. Um, obviously, the U.S. wins. There were some nervy moments in the back. I don't know that she was really tested, but even on some of the crosses, she didn't get a, a, a finger to, a hand to. Yeah. It was still nervous. Uh, did you see what we see? Yeah, I thought she was better with her shot, just normal reactions with shots on goal. She had that one save, I think it was off a header to the far post um, that she makes. I thought she makes a couple good saves in the second half. But anything coming across her six-yard box in the air, she's struggling with. We've seen her swipe at it. I think tonight I saw two where she missed. She came out and didn't get anything on it. And France didn't, didn't punish the United States for that. But we saw that in Spain as well. She had one like that. So I thought she played better where she's going to get a lot of confidence from that. But if you're scouting this U.S. team, you say flight that, flight that box, flight her six in particular, because she just is unable to time it. I want to ask you about Jill Ellis here because she's gotten a lot of criticism and, and I think some of it maybe has been fair but today with the result with the decision she's made 
she seems to have the edge. Well, I feel like it's a national pastime with everyone deciding whether or not Jill Ellis is a good coach. But what Jill Ellis did right today was her tactics and her style <laughs> of play. Because, and also the personnel decision. I think she made the right call with the starting lineup. But she also pressed France. The question is whether or not you press France and then leave space in behind for their speedy wingers. What she did was she harried those players into dispossession. I have never seen Henri give up the ball as much as they did. I've never seen that midfield trio of France be dispossessed and just passing the ball out of bounds. So not only is the psychological edge, Jill Ellis played into the psycho psychological edge that the U.S. has over France in these big moments. Go ahead, Julie. Hey, Kate. Seb, yeah. I'm going to jump in real quick. Can I can I ask you a defensive question? My defender of all defenders. Yeah. When they went into the United States, went into that 5-4-1, oh. I thought they got really deep and really conservative. True. Do you think they went into that too early? Yeah, exactly. We were talking about that. Stevie Nichol, the former Revs coach, was like, what are they doing? And I'm like, I agree. Why are they going to a 5-4-1 yeah. with 30 minutes left, especially when you're just substituting yeah. Lindsey Horan in, someone who is the most complete midfielder we have that can control both sides of the ball? I thought, if anything, you can fault Jill Ellis is going into that bunker system too early. For more, sign up now for ESPN+.